The best way I can describe a blockbuster is like if Chuck E. Cheese designed your local library. On Netflix, you have like an algorithm that's kind of figuring out what you like. We had a guy named Steve who was like, you look like you might like Rambo. The double VHS. This was a commitment. Nothing can compare to the existential disappointment of getting to the video store and seeing the picture of the movie you wanted Aww. and nothing behind it. You would take the new release and you would hide it behind a crappy movie so that you could come back later that night and get the new movie. Be like, oh, Matrix, this is amazing. I don't have my card on me. Let's just stick it behind Ernest Saves Christmas. No one's gonna look there. This generation can't possibly understand the pressure of picking the right movie because that's all you got. When the Blockbuster moved into my small town, it was a big deal. One, because they had a lot of movies, but more importantly, they had an entire candy section you had to walk through to get to the cash register. Which makes perfect sense, right? Like, why go next door to the convenience store and buy Twizzlers when I can pay $35 more for them here? After you finish watching the movie, you have to rewind it. You get charged for not rewinding the tape. Which is really just a tax on potheads, and I don't appreciate it. Yeah, of course I forgot to rewind. I forgot a lot of things. The mega difference between Blockbusters and Mom and Pop Shop was the dirty movies. Which doesn't really make any sense that corporate America is like, we won't stand for that filth. But Mom and Pop are like, sure. So in 2000, Blockbuster had the opportunity to buy Netflix for $50 million. Could have been Blockbuster and chill. <laughs> well, this is how we used to rent movies before we had Netflix. Look kids, this is what it was like. This is why this new generation sucks. They don't have to wait for anything. They have Netflix, they get everything instantly. It's right there. <laughs>